My next guest is an Australian academic. She is the author of a new book called Sex Matters. Please welcome Holly Lawford-Smith. Welcome to the show. Uh, your book, Sex Matters, already we know that that is a topic that a lot of people are nervous about. Yep. Even the recognition of uh, biological reality when it comes to sex causes all sorts of problems. Uh, what is the thesis of your book? Uh, well, the book is a collection of philosophy papers that I couldn't get published. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of proves my point. Then. Yeah, I think it does, yeah. So I'd started writing in about 2018 on gender critical feminism, gender critical philosophy, and uh, having the experience, I think, that Peter was nicely describing where um, there was a lot of gatekeeping going on, ideological gatekeeping. So either just flat out rejections from journals or in re retrospect, hilarious um, reports from referees about how morally wrong the arguments were and how objectionable or uh, marginalizing vulnerable communities, whatever. Um, and so at that time, I decided I would try to get a book contract to gather all my heretical thoughts together. Yes, um, heretical is the word. Right? <laughs> so what is it you were saying that was so horrible and objectionable? Well, there are papers in that book on... Um, what is gender and what do they want it to be? They, the trans activists. There's a paper on um, whether turf is a slur, whether gender critical speech is hate speech. And actually, the one I'm most proud of and maybe was the most controversial is about um, sex self-identification and costly signals. And that's asking whether there is anything that a man who wants to be a woman or feels he is a woman, is there anything he could do that would signal to women that he is not a threat to any of their interests. I see. And I argue that there's nothing. Okay. And so I'm kind of still baffled that that book got published. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people won't know that there's a different kind of situation in Australia to here. I mean, we share some of the same problems. Yes. But we also have some different problems, don't we? What, can you give us some information about that? Well, um, so I'm from Victoria. I live in Melbourne. Uh, and this is the most... What? Progressive? <laughs> well, we have to put it in air quotes. Whatever the word, yeah, it's what not should really the word be? It? But by its own lights, the most progressive yes. state. So we have already sex self ID. We have already conversion therapy um, ban, which is yeah, effectively mandating affirmation only approaches to gender identity. And we are currently consulting on vilification law that would make uh, that would introduce hate speech on the grounds of gender identity, and that is a threat to gender critical speech across the board. So we have the things that you guys are like worrying about getting. <laughs> You've already got them. We've already got them. Yeah, I mean, there was an article recently in the Daily Mail talking about the worry that if Labour get in, which they probably will, they will instigate uh, stronger hate speech laws that will be weaponized against feminists in particular, or anyone who wants to say that sex is immutable, that, you, that no human being has ever came, changed sex. In other words, people who are wanting to express facts, which is a worry, right? Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting, I guess, because it must, as far as I know, um, it's the first time that a marginalized group's protection is said to depend on a, on a lie. Right, so because right. of course all the rhetoric about this is that like that's what it takes to protect trans equality, or that's what it takes to protect trans dignity, uh, that that you you must affirm one's a person's sense of identity if they feel such distress about it. That is an important thing to do, right? Make people respect their dignity and equality. Sure. But I can't think of any other case in history where a minority minority group's inclusion has depended on. Yeah, the, the social going along with this falsehood. But there are precedents in history where certain metaphysical beliefs have been forced onto a population as a whole. Yes. And I think that's sort of what's happening here. You know, if, if there are a contingent of people who believe that they have a gendered soul, a kind of essence, most of us don't believe that. Most of us don't have a gender identity or believe in a gender identity. Right. But the difference is, in a liberal society, they get to believe that, and we get to believe what we believe, and everyone, you know, gets on and it's fine. But now we're saying that everyone has to go along with that belief. I think that's the distinction probably, isn't it? Yeah, although again, I mean, there must be some historians that could speak um, to this point. Like, um, I'm just thinking throughout history, it must be that things are often cloaked in the rhetoric of uh, incredible harm. And yes. it's just a new truth, but this is how to protect the vulnerable. 
and then and then there's a sort of reckoning over time that no, okay, that's actually a system of ideas. Yes. And and then we quarantine it off and we have mutual toleration. If I'm right that that's how it usually goes, then yeah, yeah this is just another one where it's like, oh no, it's just about a minority group and harm. But eventually it'll be like, oh no, that was just a weird set of metaphysical commitments. I mean, I often invite trans activists onto the show and they never agree to come on. So <laughs> firstly, there's the issue of they won't agree to talk to me. Yes. But secondly, so many of the, the books and articles I've read by the activists, they start from the concept that uh, any disagreement is a form of hate. Yes. And they also intuit what is going on in, a, in, their, in their detractors' minds. Yep. So they decide, for instance, I mean, I, I've met a lot of gender critical feminists. I've never met any hateful gender critical feminists. I've never met any gender critical feminists who just hate trans people. That, uh, from what I can see, that doesn't really exist. But they say that all gender critical feminists are inherently hateful. So are they not just mind reading on a great scale? I mean, like, it's tempting to say yes, but I guess I can think of examples where you do get these extremely calm, um, I think the word the propaganda theorist uses like technicist propaganda, where you get these calm, scholarly types that just like wheel out a lot of science and say they just want to talk about the facts, it's just a matter of the truth, they don't hate anyone, but the stuff they're saying is actually like degrading or undermining of a particular group's standing. Yes. So that can happen, right? Sure. Yeah. And I think the question is so they are accusing us of doing that. It's not impossible that we're doing that? Like, it's, it's possible? Are you doing that, Holly? <laughs> I'm not doing that. Well, I haven't seen any sign that any of us are doing that. Yes. But, um, but it's not like, yeah, I guess I'm just saying it, it has happened in some cases, so I can sort of see there. Uh, but yeah. because it's happened on a few cases, it doesn't, it doesn't follow that that is therefore what is happening in all cases. No, of course. Yeah, but, but they have their ideology, right? And, yeah. and from their point of view... They have a view of what trans liberation looks like. And from their point of view, we are thwarting that outcome. But what is that outcome? Isn't the outcome that everyone accepts their point of view and implements it in society and public policy? That is their aim, yeah. <laughs> but, but that is an essentially authoritarian measure. So they're effectively saying... Everyone accepts it. That's not authoritarian. If everyone they accepts it. win the it. hearts and minds of the public. I yeah. don't think they're really interested <laughs> in winning hearts and minds. I don't know if, if uh, sending death threats... Uh, people and calling them scum is going to win over anyone. <laughs> you might be right. If I'm yeah. honest. Okay, well, Holly, thanks very much for joining me today. Really appreciate it.